All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Tuesday the 20th. We did not have it yesterday as we were. We were doing President's Day. In all honesty, I was yelling at refs in the soccer tournament. And uh, <laughs> watching my son play soccer. Uh, I'm going to start out today a little bit differently with you all. And this is the risk that we're facing. And you hear it quite a bit in the, the talking heads. If you listen to CNBC or Bloomberg, uh, Fox News, you're going to hear this all the time, talk about multiple expansion. And this actually came out uh, last week, but I didn't quite go over it, but I want to go over it uh, just so you understand what that means. The gap between price of the S&P 500 and forward earnings estimate is the footprint or the target path of multiple expansion. Meaning, it's a fancy way of saying stock prices are going up faster than earnings estimates. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that the market has some opportunity to grow and to grow in a way that that says, hey, if things keep growing at this pace, we'll hit 5,500 or something like that, right? That's kind of what the analysts are doing. They're trying to predict with this amount of growth on these companies, the S&P can hit this dollar figure of, of growth. And usually it's around number 4,500 to, to 5,000, something like that. Here's the problem, though. Multiple expansion is ne isn't necessarily a bad thing. You see it in bull markets as performance chasing or fear of missing out on the further gains compelled by added buying interest, which neither of those is a fundamental reason to be in the market, right? Naturally, you will also hear amid multiple expansion is a lot of the <laughs> of the rationalization of the move. And these are some things you have heard myself or Keeve also say. The company is going to grow into its valuation. You heard us talk about that for Apple for years. You heard us talk about Baidu for years. We're currently talking about that with Meta. But the valuation is already there. There's some companies like Apple that really truly is fully valued at 515 or 513. Um, Meta is valued on the low end and it's just, it's a way to justify, and it's a Warren Buffett way to justify undervalued or overvalued stocks. Analysts or analysts aren't fully understanding the company's growth prospects. That's one that we use all the time. The stock can sport a premium valuation today because interest rates will be lower in the future. We heard that for a year. Yeah, the stock is overvalued based on 2024 estimates, but if you look at it based on 2026 estimates, it isn't overvalued. It all sounds reasonable at the moment until the moment arrives that squashes those growth expectations. It is then the overvaluation becomes crystal clear in a material, or another way to put that is a significant decline in the stock price. That is what we're facing right now. But can someone tell me what stocks are we facing that in? What stocks are we facing that can have a material decline because they were overvalued for future earnings at a ridiculous rate? Can anyone take a guess what those may be? NVIDIA, definitely, that's one of them. But there's a group of them. What is that group called? 
because it ran like 80 some odd percent of our earnings last year. The Mag 7, you got the Magnificent 7 or the Mag 6 if you want to take the, the one out, right? Yes, those ones have run to where you're saying these type of things with them. The good news, a lot of our core holdings that are not these, core holdings like Baidu, Boeing, Disney, um, what else could we throw in there? Uh, Micron, Square. If you adjust some of your technical indicators for the future pricing, the stock buyback, Meta could fall in there. Google doesn't. Google's pretty close. The Russell shares fall in there. Bank of America falls in there. JP Morgan still falls in there. So there are some things that may fall into a category that that's not overpriced. My, uh, Murphy, what, not Murphy, um, Marathon Oil is one that's definitely underpriced that has a lot of forward movement. But can you remember what's the key about our stock market? Why would our stock market mirror this year what it did last year? Anyone remember what we were hearing at the beginning of the year? We can have another 2023 if, if what? There you go. If the MAG-7 keep performing, uh, it will be interesting. It will really be interesting to see if NVIDIA, which lost 4.3% today, $31, Another $13.62 after hours. If some of these stocks can still maintain that movement up. Apple doesn't seem like it can. It's probably fully valued at 213. Currently trading at 181. Can't get above 200. Um, what's the next one? Google. Google on that 150-ish range. It has some upward movement, but you're looking at multiple expansion in AI, which will change its future earnings. Amazon doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. Meta, well, they join up their dividend, created a dividend, huge stock buyback. You can justify that one. NVIDIA, I don't know if you can. Microsoft, it's fully valued. There's a, a just a central thought process. Tesla is actually down horribly. Tesla, well, it's actually back up to 193. Give me a quick second. The highs, the highs in the last year were 299. The five-year high, which was about two years ago, was 414. So it's down by half. It was at 170. I don't know if it has a price at 192 that justifies it. Fundamentally, it's not sound at all. In fact, fundamentally, it wouldn't surprise me to see Elon Musk say the same thing that uh, Jeff Bezos said, that said, yeah, it'll probably go out of business and it's overpriced. I wonder if it's something that they say that allows them to knock the stock price down so they can buy a bunch of it. But this is the risk in the market. This year, which a movement last year, even though we had a 19.86% loss the previous year, when you have a 24% movement in the market, the risk is the numbers get stretched. You don't have as many buyers because the stock prices for the MAG-7 get so high it outprices uh, middle America. The prices get so high that it has to be restructured and exited out of certain bond funds. The prices get so high that it's not in a position to be attractive to the retail investor, to a 
hedge fund investor to anyone for the risk of the downside. So our fear in our market now is risk to the downside, risk that we can't keep on the trajectory that we had last year. That is why we've been talking about protection. That's why you've seen us talk about protection in regards to we protect, protect as often, I can't type, as often as possible when earnings, technical crossovers, or market trends dictate. Which also means, and this is a key, key point that I should bring about for you guys. This also means that sometimes we have protection on when we don't need it the next day. So someone said, hey, you stop protecting Meta. We had Meta bouncing between 460, 490. We had a good one at 490. We had not such a good one at 470 on puts that were making us money. But sometimes we're going to lose a little bit to protect some profits. In this one, we have 400 shares. We are looking to protect $76,000 in this particular account. Well, Kevin... What does this 500 call mean? And this is kind of fun to talk about because for Meta, we initiated a full collar trade, which is equal to the long put and this position, a short call. Long put, we have the right to sell a stock at a certain price for a certain period of time. Sometimes it's a cretin period of time. Short call. The obligation to sell a stock at a certain price for a certain period of time. Now it's kind of neat because an obligation is awesome. Obligation to sell equals someone pays us or a credit in the account. In this position, when Meta was closer to 460 and just had its earnings, we thought, you know what? We sell it at 50 bucks. That's $40 higher. We'll take in a $9.80 credit. It's like we sold our stock at $509.08. When they have a cost basis of 281 and the real cost basis is closer to 140, we're sitting pretty. We're sitting real pretty. And for that reason, we thought, why don't we put it in a round number 500 that Meta probably won't get up to and get over after its big move from 380 up to 450. I think it was a $70 move. We'll put it out to just before their earnings because Meta should report at the end of April. And we'll see what happens. If it keeps going higher and gets called away, 
we're going to book a huge profit. If it doesn't, we can use that 980 to protect us almost $10 to the downside. If it goes up, but not quite up to 500, that credit gets bigger. And on days like today, this covered call, when the stock lost $1.57, it made $1.25. Stock today, we lost $6.28. We made up $500 of it on the way down. We can not only protect your stock with a long put, we can protect your stock with a short call. There are two different ways to protect your stock. And today we chose to use that covered call because we're not sure of the range of meta. 460 is our line in the sand. But if you look at a chart on meta, 460 is a tough line in the sand to stick by. It might not even be the best line in the sand because that line in the sand keeps moving. Meta's building a base right now. If you were to look at Meta, what is the bottom range of their line in the sand? If you were to look at Meta, what's the bottom range of their line in the sand? Three thirteen. <laughs> Holding the gap, the split, four fifty five. I love it. You all in a certain way are correct. The gap could be right here, which might have been four thirteen where Jim was talking about. The lower end could be four fifty five even though it maybe looks like it got down to 450 here. Holding the gap, which might be closer to here where it went up, which is 460. There's a lot of uncertainty. We don't know where it is. In building a base, the stock doesn't know where it is. There it is a little bit harder. 63, 55, 465, maybe it's 406. It's tough to read. Hey, maybe it's 417 on the R1. Maybe it's 445 on the R2. The funny thing is we came up with four different answers. And to be 100% honest, we're not exactly sure either. We were taking the 460 where it gapped up to. That was other number that we were using. Hence, protection came on. Hence, protection came on, which cost us money the next day. And you'll notice a couple of these days it came off again pretty quickly. But we're getting an idea of 485, 488, 490, 485. We're going to be looking to put more protection on to protect the profits that are in there. We love this look. This is what building a base looks like. It's finding a level to make its next, next jump up. When might it make the next jump up? When might Meta make that next jump higher? 
Think it'll do it at Christmas? Ah, that's not fundamentally sound. You'll think we'll do it for the tax selling that happens end of March, first week of April? That's probably not technically fundamentally sound either, right? When's the next gap to the upside? When do you think we might see another jump higher on Meta? Someone typed in summer. That is mostly true. There we go. Bingo, Jim. Great answer. Next earnings. Russ, you nailed it. Mary, awesome. Next quarter, earnings. Bingo. It needs the catalyst. It needs to justify its numbers. It'll probably melt up to 485, 488, maybe 490. But the catalyst is probably earnings, which is why we choose to get paid for some protection. And we're trying to use that covered call or short call as a way to protect that stock on days like today. Awesome understanding of what's happening. So yes, for those that asked me, that's how we're trying to protect above the 460 range with a covered call. Uh, I read the big picture to you. I'm glad we went through that. If we look where our stock market's going to end this week, we probably need a break. I'm going to go with lower. I'm doing nothing more than following a trend because also it looks like the Dow is also trying to build a base to try to find the range that it can sit in before the next jump higher or the earnings season. S&P. Still bullish, but it's not overbought. I find it very interesting. It's like it came up to the four, uh, excuse me, 550-ish, 548 range. Can't get above it. It'll be interesting to see if it comes back down and tries one more time. Maybe we're going to have a triple top. But I like that we're no longer overbought. So we have the opportunity to go higher again. Let's see the Dow. There we go. And then the NASDAQ looks much the same. It almost mirrors the S&P. It's no longer overbought. It does have some opportunity to go higher. Uh, it would not surprise me to see it go back and test 16,080. It also would not surprise me to see it go down and test the 50-day, the blue line, at 15,163. It's a coin toss. It can go up or down. Right now, there's not a an indicator that says it has a way to go higher. Someone just asked me, what about the S&P 500 um, Williams percent R? This is institutional trading. It's still rather high, which might be our explanation on why uh, they, they only want to buy in when there's a good deal. Maybe it has to go down and touch that 50-day uh, to see big money want to come back in and buy at a deal again. Uh, still going with a 1% return on February. Not much by way of earnings is coming this week. So um, we have Marathon Oil for ourselves, Dominion on Thursday. Not much to speak of. We have Walmart tomorrow, which will be interesting. Um, leading indicators today, FOMC minutes will, will probably lead our market out to see if there's any indication that maybe they're going to raise rates in May. Uh, from what we heard, you won't find anything. So the minutes will probably be a disappointment. Another reason to be protected through the rest of the week, because all we have is initial claims, continuing claims, existing home sales. Friday is, is nothing. It's kind of a ho-hum, no real news. So the international news 
is what's going to move our markets like it moved our markets today. Oh, I'm going to finish a little earlier tonight. Preparing for earnings. So we've already done earnings. We're basically protecting current long put protection, and we change it from out of the money to in the money. We're trying to protect as much as we can on the way down for a breather for our market. For tax selling, as people are going to sell some of their positions for gains and for losses. So we're trying to be in a position where we're going to protect for that. Uh, I found a really interesting article, Stocks Gains to Survive a Market Correction if Rate Cuts are Delayed. This is a great understanding of what could happen to our markets if we only get those two or three rate cuts May, June, and July and then they stop as to not affect the election. Definitely a good read. Follow the link. Six trillion in cash on the sidelines will come into play this year. I don't know where she's getting her, her numbers from. I can't figure it out, but it's a very interesting video on, on where the earnings are possible for, excuse me, where the, the catalyst is possible for the uh, for more money to come into our market. Again, I don't see the, uh, I just don't see six trillion on the sidelines. Uh, kind of a ridiculous article, but I put it in here. The mouse utopia experiment, it relates to the stock market, but more importantly, Capital One to acquire Discover Financial Services. My Discover card is going to be owned by Capital One. Um, this will be huge because this puts them right up with Visa and MasterCard. They're already the two biggest ones, but this now puts them in an ability to be a one stop where you can have a Discover. You can have a MasterCard or a Visa. It'll be interesting to see how it's run, but you now have one card company that runs Visa, MasterCard, and Discover cards. Usually you've had Visa, Discover, um, MasterCard, and American Express. And obviously American Express has been hurting for forever. All right, a uh, little bit quicker today. Any questions you guys have that I can answer for you? And let me know if I answered the, the uh, hey, how, how are you protecting with something other than a long put? Um, yes, okay. So in the past, I have voted for you guys. If you got emails from Disney for your voting, Please forward those to me. Uh, I've got a specific PIN number and so forth. In the past, I used to get them to me, and we would take care of voting for you. We always voted conservative for voting for Disney. We are voting for Iger. We're only voting for half of the board members, and we are voting for sites or salts to have a board member and uh, I've got his name down on a very staunch conservative that has some expertise in international. So uh, if you don't mind, send me any Disney uh, voting and we will take care of it. We've got the pin number and we'll make sure that your voting is conservative and we will not be voting for some of the woke people or some of the people that have caused Disney to go down. We'll vote no for those individuals. We also always vote that their stock compensation is tied to the stock price. We also vote that we don't believe in golden parachutes. They earn their way to make money. They should not be given money if they do not do well by the company. So uh, Russ, if you don't mind, just zip that email to me. We will take care of it for you. 
Uh, any other questions? If not, guys, have a wonderful evening. Normally I do this a little bit more, but I guess this was a quick one for tonight. Yes, we can protect your stock ownership above and beyond just the long put that acts as insurance. Uh, we can use the short call or do a full call or trade, or we can just use the short call covered call as protection for your stock. And yes, something else to make a comment to. Did you notice banks today or what was up? Alaska Airlines was up. Bank of America is only down 13 cents. Clorox was up. Costco was up today. Discover Financial Services was, was up. Dollar General was up. That's a little surprising. General Motors was up. Google L was up today. Uh, Intel was up. I don't understand that one, even though they had so-so earnings. Key Corp was up. Lockheed Martin was up today. Um, Micron was up big today, percent and a half. So we're keeping track of these things. Square was up today. Yes, we are making sure that, uh, <laughs> that we uh, are taking care of positions. All right, guys. Hey, appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Take care, guys, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.